A few months back, the coaster world was taken by surprise as the announcement of two major amusement park chains were merging to form one super chain, Six Flags and Cedar Fair. This brought lots of excitement, lots of worry, and a ton of curiosity towards the potential merger moves. Will Six Flags Flash Pass be implemented, or Cedar Fair's Fast Lane? How will passes work? And of course, what are the future relationships and current ones with other manufacturers between the two chains, like now that they are planning to merge into one company? Yeah, there's lots to go over here, lots to discuss, and plenty to speculate on and wonder about. Today we wanted to talk about manufacturer relationships and see who Cedar Fair and Six Flags fancy bringing into the next generation of Cedar Flags or Six Fair. I don't know. You guys get it. Welcome back to Ghoster Coasters, all our Ghoster Coasting friends out there. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the spooky fun. Huge shout out to our channel producers and CP Coaster Lover. If you'd like to become a channel member and get exclusive shout outs on every video and be a channel producer, check out the link down below or our memberships page. You don't want to miss out in the screams of the amusement park madness. Oh, and of course, all our thoughts and breakdowns on everything coasters, like who will Cedar Flags work with in the future and where could these ride models go. Let's go ahead and get into it, everyone. The first manufacturer we're going to discuss today is going to be Zamperla. With the reimagining of Top Thrill 2, the Beach Boardwalk Wild Mouse Roller Coaster, Aeronautical Landing Flat Rides Package at Carowinds, and Adventure Port Flats at Kings Island, we think it's safe to say the future of Zamperla is bright, and the relationship with Cedar Fair and Six Flags going forward will likely be there. If Top Thrill 2 is successful, which we think it will be, and much more reliable than before, then why wouldn't Cedar Fair go with them in the future for other parks within the ever-growing chain? There are plenty of parks that could use an LSM launch coaster, and Zamperla seems to be offering those now, with the two rebirths of former Intamin coasters at PNE Playland in Vancouver called Thunderbolt, and of course, Cedar Point's Top Thrill 2. Kings Island could use an LSM launch for thrill of riders, or even smaller parks could potentially see a Zamperla ride coming their way. Michigan Adventure, anybody? I'm just saying. Boomerang is back, with Six Flags Great Adventure adding a super boomerang in 2024, along with Kings Island adding Snoopy Soapbox Racers. In addition to that, we see the Vacoma resurgence in America happening before our eyes as rides like Big Bear Mountain get great praise from guests the rumored tilt coaster coming to Codaland, and of course, good gravy at Holiday World. Vacoma seems to be making its rounds back in the US, and that's good news for all of us, as the new age Vacomas look incredible. Yeah, they offer plenty of ride layouts and concepts which could fit the needs of almost every park in the chain, both Six Flags and Cedar Fair. And at the price point being a touch cheaper than Mach and Intamin and B&M, the future of Vacoma looks bright and we can see the companies leaning on them to fill the park needs for many years to come. Cedar Point would be cool to see a new age Vacoma at, but there isn't much of a need for one other than the family models and well, capacity may be an issue for them versus say Kings Island, but who knows. Moving forward, could we see another Vacoma at Kings Island? Say, filling the Vortex plot with a launch coaster of some type that's meant for thrill riders? I don't know guys, I'm just saying. Six Flags Great America maybe even? Maybe some of the smaller parks in the chain could get a Vacoma Super Boomerang, or one of the Bermuda Blitz models as well. Time will tell with the resurgence in America. We think Vacoma and Cedar Fair relationship is just getting started. Moving on to some safer bets here within the chain, we'll discuss both B&M and GCI. With the success of numerous rides within the chain, such as Mystic Timbers at Kings Island, Zambezi Zinger at Worlds of Fun, to all the B&Ms like Fury 325 at Carowinds or all of Cedar Point and Kings Island's B&M roller coasters. One thing is for certain, these manufacturers deliver. They are very reliable, which will bode very well with any park moving along with future attractions. So yes. With the new surf coaster model from B&M and the ever evolving GCI team with Titan Track and more, we do see these manufacturers being used quite a bit throughout the future. Heck, even Canada's Wonderland is planning a launched wing coaster for 2025 and had renditions of a GCI Carolines as could well. Use a GCI. So they are Maybe both the Dino's here to stay, Alive plot, but who knows. Canada's Wonderland could also still get that GCI. A Son of Beast remake anyone with Titan Track and Wood? Differentiate from Steel Vengeance, you know, the hyper hybrid and bring back an old ode to a former coaster at Kings Island? Let us know which Six Flags parks you could see a GCI go in at. 
plenty of parks, so obviously a great modern Woody fits a lot of their needs. And then we got B&M still whipping out rides for parks like King's Dominion and Canada's Wonderland for the 2025 season. And their track record of reliability seems inevitable that they are here to stay. Even smaller Cedar Fair parks are getting them, like Dorney Park getting Iron Menace this year, and Valley Fair has been rumored for an invert for as long as enthusiasts could predict it. So, bank on Six Flags and Cedar Fair using them going forward for any needs because they always deliver, guys. Here's where the fun gets into play, as we want to discuss maybes within the chain and see where it leads to in the future. Starting off with Gravity Group, Cedar Fair obviously loves using them for retracks, with recent work done on the Beast at Kings Island and Grizzly at Kings Dominion. So why not give them a shot at a full-scale project? They've utilized hybrid support structures before on Voyage, and this bodes well for maintenance and cost of upkeep over time. Parks like Cedar Point who really need a new woody but lack a ton of carpenters for upkeep could really use something like this. Even a Six Flags park getting a new Gravity Group woody would be super awesome. Now, we're moving along to one of the fun ones, the one Cedar Fair supposedly has bad relationships with, won't work with ever again, and simply have moved on from, according to the enthusiast out there, that is. Rocky Mountain Construction has brought some of the elite top tier rides in the world. Steel Vengeance is often recognized as one of the best roller coasters ever, Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens, and so many more. The single rail concept has also taken off within the Six Flags chain. So is Cedar Fair really out on RMC or will we potentially see more RMC coasters in the future? If Six Flags has any say in this, we will likely see the Cedar Fair and RMC teams working together again. The new Wild Moose models look amazing for smaller parks. The single rails can do wonders for the regional parks and the ground up hybrids or rumored T-Rex can dominate a skyline in almost any park out there. We all know RMC delivers quality ride experiences. Regardless of the finicky issues they have or the shin restraints, we all agree that RMC makes incredible coaster layouts. We could see a single rail coaster going to many parks within the chain, from Six Flags Great America to Michigan's Adventure. Potentially a relocated railblazer if California's Great America isn't around in a decade or so. Even Kings Island, Carowinds, and many other parks could benefit from this unique experience. As far as ground up hypers go, well, ding ding ding, Kings Island please, Son of Beast remake. Yes. In all seriousness, plenty of parks would love a top tiered roller coaster and RMC deliver, so where else could you see an RMC at within the Six Flags Cedar Fair chain? Let us know down in the comments, and before we get to it, let us know who you think the most anticipated relationship with Cedar Flags and a coaster manufacturer is. There are plenty of great companies out there such as Mock Rides, so Yes, we do see Cedar Fair working with them going forward. Gerslauer is a Cedar Fair in and a Six Flags out. We could potentially see more brought in. And even SNS for some flats or potentially an Axis coaster. But today, we wanted to touch on the big one. Intamin! After last year's rumors sent enthusiasts into a craze about Intamin and Cedar Fair, stemming from an El Toro Ryan video that had claimed Cedar Fair executives, specifically from Kings Island, had gone to Universal Islands of Adventure to ride Velocicoaster. One has to wonder, what is the future with Cedar Fair specifically? We know Six Flags is building an Intamin splash at Over Georgia, which is exciting for everyone. And if the two companies merge, then what? It feels like it's almost the perfect scenario to happen, and it seems like Cedar Fair was already willing to open that door back up with Intamin, starting off last year. And we all assume they put in a pitch for Top Thrill too. With everything lining up from Six Flags having a good relationship, Cedar Fair execs being open to discussions with them, and the execs taking a trip to ride one of their heaviest hitters of the new age in Velocicoaster, the question seems to be, why not? Plenty of parks could use an Intamin roller coaster, and who wouldn't love to see more Intamin throughout? They brought us the first Giga, the first Strata, and they're building the tallest roller coaster ever currently is Six Flags Cadea in Falcon's Flight. And they've never seemed to stop innovating. We'd love to see Cedar Flags lean on some good old Intamins in the future, and we see that relationship starting to form again right before our eyes. Now, all we need is the first Cedar Fair Park to buy into a pitch, and we could potentially see Intamin for ages to come again within our favorite parks. The price point is high, but the cost of innovation is sometimes very worth it. Kings Island could use an Intamin LSM swing launch coaster. It would fill plenty of needs and be a marketable coaster for the park. Cedar Point would become the Intamin capital with a few more rides from them. Six Flags Great Adventure has King de Ka and El Toro. Maybe add another Intamin from the catalog? Great America? Over Texas? Fiesta, Texas? I mean, how many parks would be 
an awesome fit for an Intamin roller coaster. It feels like there's less parks that couldn't use an Intamin than could. So what say you? Let us know down below what you guys think of all these potential manufacturers and Cedar Fair going forward. Do you see another manufacturer coming out and becoming the one they lean on going forward? And which parks would you like to see get what type of coasters? These are the manufacturers we see being prominent within the newly merged chain going forward. And we'd love to hear your thoughts and predictions as well. Make sure you hit that like button, it greatly helps the video. And of course, we couldn't do it without all of you wonderful coaster ghosters out there. If anything, hit that subscribe button, join the spooky fun. We always love interacting and chatting coasters with all of you. Become a member if you're already subscribed and get sweet shout outs every video and become a coaster ghost and producer of the channel. Thanks for coming along and as always, thanks for being a part of our spooky community and for coaster, coaster ghosting, ghosting with ghoster coasters. coasters. Have a Six Flags day everybody. At America's Rock and Roller Coast.